two of the major players in Old Testament tradition who are both major prophetic liberators of the Old Testament. And they are on this part of the mountain of transfiguration. And they say to Jesus in so many words, let's chill up here. Let's not go anywhere at all. Let's just stay right here where we are. I wish I had a prayer to you. The problem with staying right where they are is that if they stay where they are, they cannot fulfill who they are. Y'all not praying with me. I get this. He is called to be the savior of the world. They are called to be his disciples and followers of the most high God himself. And the danger of getting caught up and enamored in transfigured moments is that you want to stay and remain in a place that was only designed to get you prepared. It is a simple and important memo. Never allow yourself to become emotionally enamored with that which is designed to be a temporary place. One of the dangers of always being in constant desire of staying in high moments of celebration is that if you stay on the mountain, you miss and bypass your purpose in the valley. Y'all stay with me for just a few moments. And so when they come back down, they encounter this demonic boy. And one of the things that you must understand that the text makes very clear to us is that while they are on the mountain of transfiguration, that there was something going on in the valley. And that oftentimes while you are having your mountaintop experience, the devil is already busy in the valley orchestrating and devising your next destruction to meet you at a point where you come off your high and your worship. Praise God. And that's the word for somebody tonight because someone here tonight can testify that you are in the mountain right now. But in a few moments, people, are you going to leave the mountain and go back to some stuff that the devil has already paid for you right after your moments of celebrative com amen, communion with the Almighty God. And when they come back down, there's an interesting twist in this story, Dr. White, that is bypassed and often overlooked in the reporting of the story. This boy brought by his father, I want you to hear the words of the father in verse 7. The father says that he has a dumb spirit. Now we have to walk for just a little while. Will y'all pray with me? The father says that he has a dumb spirit. It is a lelos, Dr. Bryant, in the Greek. And it means that he is mute. But it is Matthew who gives a stronger connotation in Matthew chapter 17, verse 15. And the report is that he comes to Jesus Christ and says to him, Master, my son is a lunatic. And the word say that he loves me. And it means to be moonstruck. It means to be crazy. It means to be buck wild. It means to be foolish, outlandish, fanatical, wild, ferocious, and extreme. Yeah. I thought I was in a prayer church. Come on here, pray. And so interestingly here, one version goes on so far as to say that he is epileptic. But he describes his son as a lunatic who possesses a dumb spirit. And watch what he says in verse 18. Can I stay in the word? But watch what he says in verse 18. That whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth. And becomes rigid. And in verse 22, he says that his son keeps falling in water and in fire. Yeah. Notice that. He keeps falling into the same stuff. Y'all ain't getting this. He keeps falling into the same stuff. He keeps doing the same thing and ended up in the same place. He keeps falling in the same miserable cycle and he's a lunatic. He's somebody who does not appear to be learning from his mistake because he keeps falling back into the same stuff over and over and over. And I know right now I'm making somebody mad because you think I'm calling you a lunatic. But if I can use the text, the text suggests that anybody keeps falling into the same mess, the same activity, same 
worship. Y'all ain't gonna pray for me. You better breathe for it. Get this if you will. You've grown accustomed to falling into the wrong thing. That when the right thing comes along, it looks abnormal. Now there's somebody who may not be a lunatic, but you some lunatic his behavior. You keep falling in and out of sin. Self-inflicted nonsense. First man should have taught you a lesson. You act like you don't understand what I'm saying. The first man should have taught you a lesson. The first woman should have taught you a lesson, but there you go again, falling back into the same cycle. You move from one job to another job. Ain't nothing changed. You move from one city, but nothing has changed. You move from one job to another job again, but nothing has changed. You move from one man to man, but nothing has changed. You move from one woman to woman, but ain't nothing changed. You move from women to men, but still nothing has changed. And I hear you saying that on average, all men are dope. I beg to differ with you. Maybe all men are not dope. Maybe you're just the best dog catcher in town. <laughs> All right, Greg. Let me walk. Let me walk just a little while here. Y'all keep your seats. Come on here, sir. Oh, Greg. Let me walk. You may not preach it, but let us talk here. Falling back. Falling back. Falling back. Into the same mess. Same spending habits. Same job habits. Same kind of friendship. Same. Somebody in your life 
just a text. Mm. The text says uh -huh. that the fathers been with the disciples when Jesus is not there. Right. Now you have to remember uh -huh. that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were being written first. Yeah. But they write their gospels after the resurrection of Jesus. I'm not getting too deep here tonight. But they write their gospels after the resurrection of Jesus. And they write their gospels to the first Christian Christians. Uh -huh. They write their gospel to the first century Christian culture. Yeah. Not just to tell the story of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But they use some of the story of Jesus Christ uh -huh. to prove a particular point to the first century church yeah. and to make point to Judaic culture of that day. Yeah. And what it is is a reciprocity yeah. of Judaism. Yeah. So that when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh -huh. it is not just a chronicle of the historicity. Jesus Christ, but it's also a message to the church of yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I'll stay with you for just a little while. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praying for me, wife. Yes. Yes. And when you understand that, then you understand also that the disciples represent the church. Yes. Now that we've been to school, let's unpack it. If the man brings his son to church, y'all yes. ain't hearing me. The man brings his son to church. Wish I had a praying church. And when Jesus comes back from the mountain, the father tells Jesus, I brought my son to church. And the church could not help me. Jesus had this kind come out by prayer. And It's not for me. It's not 
for what I need. But I'm about to give God some praise. Tell your breakthrough. Tell your deliverance. Tell your deliverance. And tell your Yeah. Well, I'm 
for just a minute. Let's say you have a bad cough. And the doctor would say, now it's presenting itself like pneumonia. But I don't think that it what it really is. It's presenting itself a certain way. Do you get the picture now? Watch this. It's very interesting here. The juxtaposition of the words used to describe the condition of the son by the father. And the words used by mother to describe what Jesus does. Now we pray with me. Matthew calls the boy a lunatic. Mark here simply said that he got a dumb spirit. Look who is a physician said this boy is epileptic. Now we pray me. In other words, it's presenting itself like it's a medical condition. It's presenting itself like it's a physical medical malady. But when you read the text, verse 18 does not say that Jesus cures him of epilepsy. It said that Jesus rebuked the evil. Did your neighbor say he's dead? It's called exorcism. Did your neighbor say neighbor? The time to tell the devil to get out of your life. Understand that it's not what it looks like. Uh -huh. That is the problem. Jeez. But there's something people Jeez. that needs to be confronted. Yes. You know what I love about Jesus versus other people. Right. Other yes. people will deal with you yes. and treat you yes. based upon your symptoms. Right. But Jesus Christ steps in yes. and get to the source of your problem yes. and changes your issues. Right. I know I'm speaking to somebody tonight yes. because you keep dealing with people. Why so? 
Pedro 